You may be seated. Oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I am um... okay. <clears throat> it's good to be here again. Mom said that the last time we were here was about 2010, and every time I come here, uh, my mother church, I feel a renewal, and I get something a different. I am Charity Chemjor, but if I say that, most of you are going to look at me strangely. So, jita wa wajiru wa nina wajiru. Today, uh, yesterday, mom, as she said, was celebrating 50, uh, 80, 80, oh, mom, 50 years, 80 years. And as we thought about that, as we're thanking God for her, the Lord brought to my mind Joshua 14, 6 to 15. So today, I'd like us to look at some of the lessons learned from Caleb. It was read for us in the first reading. I'll just go through it very, very fast. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kehnesite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the son of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses saw on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you've wholly followed the Lord my God, and have beheld the Lord, and behold, now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while in Israel. Well, the, well, sorry. And he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, 85 years old. As yet, I am strong this day, as on that day that Moses sent me out. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for coming out, for going out, and for coming in. Father, we thank you for your word. How we pray that you're going to tabernacle with us. Lord, we pray that we're going to have our, an understanding of what you did through Caleb, your servant. Lord, we pray that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable before you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, I said I'm charity. I'm a sinner saved by grace, and I love the Lord. And as I was reading this verse, this uh, word, there are certain things that uh, I looked from uh, Caleb. And as I read from the NIV, I was using the NIV, there were certain words that stood up. One, verse eight, nevertheless. Every time you have nevertheless, you're going one direction, and then mm -mm, nevertheless. There was supposed to be more, but it comes down. And so uh, Joshua, when he was 40 years old, he was sent out to spy the land. And Caleb and Joshua, they went Caleb and Joshua. Then Caleb brought back the word. In verse 8 it says, he brought back the word as was in his heart. What he brought back was what was in his heart. But nevertheless, there were people who had gone with him. And what they spoke caused the heart of the people to melt. There are times you say something. What is in your heart? But there are others who are going to say something that causes the hearts of others to melt. But anyway, the Lord continues and he says, you gave what was in your heart and I'm going to give you something. So that was nevertheless. I haven't come to the lessons yet. Then another word, and now, verse 10. And now. So Caleb says, this day, 
I'm 85 years. Mom, this day you're 80 years. Since the Lord spoke to you, I usually hear you giving your testimony. When did you get saved? You don't, I don't want you to answer. But you've gone through the wilderness, and then, and now. Since the Lord spoke to me, I need something. So, and now. Nevertheless, and now. Then verse 11, as yet. And now, as yet. So, my strength is still strong for going out to war, for coming in, yet. Nevertheless, and now, as yet. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. So, there was a mountain. Then, there is a mountain now. Those mountains are not supposed to be there. Remember, we said, what told if you have faith as small as a master seed, you can say to that mountain, go, go, and it will go. So if there are any mountains somewhere, they need to be driven off. So Caleb says, I might still be able to do it, as the Lord says. So he was asking for his mountain, and then verse, when he was given that mountain, then in verse 15, when it finished, verse 15 says, then the land had rest from war. Amen? When we speak to those mountains, as the Lord will let us be, then the land has rest from war. So God is calling us to do things according to his plan. That's what Caleb says in verse 12. I might still be able to do it. I will drive them out, as the Lord says. Mom, you might still be able to do it. And I'm, on, I'm not only talking to mom, but I, you might still be able to do it, as the Lord says it. Uh, Labatai is my grandson. And when we read the Bible, I usually put his name there because you're told this word, you would speak it to your children and your children's children. So when I spoke the word and I put his name there, he says, Gogo, I want to see where that name, my word, where is it written in the Bible? And we own the Bible. And that's what mom taught us. She owned the Bible. Now, how about Caleb? The first thing, that struck me about Caleb. Caleb displayed faithfulness to God. He witnessed all the things that God did for the Israelites. He spent the best part of his years wandering in the wilderness. Then, at 45 years, when he received the promise, now he was 85 years. Can you imagine you're given a promise I'll buy you a car. I don't know what promises you've been given. Or you're going to go to the US or whatever. Then at 85, you're told, arise. <laughs> Mom, arise. It's time to arise. Full of vigor. You know, Mom, nowadays, as yesterday we were with her, she arises and she wants to hold on to something. And I remember when she used to stand up and walk and you had to move, run after her. Now, just how you are, arise, full of vigor. That is mom. You, you might not be 85, you might be 20, you might be 30, you might be 40. You cannot speak to that mountain unless you arise. You cannot arise if you do not know the faithfulness of God. In Joshua 14, 16, Joshua 14, 16, God honored the meeting that he had with Caleb and Joshua. And that's why Caleb was still following him and is told, arise and occupy. Arise and occupy. And then, when he occupied, it says, then the land had rest 
from war. Faithfulness. Then you arise, you occupy in the strength of the Lord and the land will have peace from war. The second lesson I was looking at was humility. Now, it's interesting about humility because Caleb was called with Joshua and I think Moses was there and he was telling Moses, do you remember what the Lord said? These were great men he was following. It's very difficult to follow people. But humility causes you to rank behind. I would want to go in front, but I'll rank behind. And by the way, humility is not a gift of the spirit. Humility is a decision you make. I decide. I'm not going to say, oh God, help me to be humble. Oh, uh, you make it in your heart. God, I will be humble by your strength, by your grace, I will be humble. So humility is a decision you need to decide today, just like Caleb did, to walk behind Joshua and to be with Moses. And in Numbers 14, 24, Numbers 14, 24, God calls Caleb my servant. Caleb, my servant. He says, uh, Numbers 14, 24, uh -huh. but because my servant Caleb has a different spirit, because my servant Labatai has a different spirit, I'm putting his name there because I can see him stretch a bit, has a different spirit, but put your name, so that he was called Caleb because he had a different spirit and he followed the Lord fully and he was brought into the land. Can you imagine what was happening there? Uh, if you look at the context of 14, 20, 14, 25, it was a time Moses was, there was drama here. They have been brought they have been brought, the, the things that have happened, they have, the spies have gone, they have seen the land in, in chapter 13, they have spied the land, they've, brought, they've been brought grapes as big as they couldn't even carry, they had to carry together, and then they have been told the land is full of people. Their cities are fortified. Hey. The Amalekites dwell there. The Israelites who knew who the Amalekites were. They were giants. They dwell there, even the Amorites. You know, all these enemies. And the people were like, what? The price of oil has gone up? What? You're talking about bread? Sugar is going 30, 300? What? How are we going to eat? We're in the transition. Our cows are dying. God, how? How? Then Caleb... Verse 30 stands up and he quietens the people before Moses and he says, let us go up, let us possess. We are able to possess. What report are you giving? When you go to put fuel in the car, huh? it is this. I hear and I see memes, people sending around memes that now we sleep with the padlock because we don't want anybody to come and take the, uh, the cooking oil. The other side, I saw people sending out, oh, this is the new government we wanted, sugar is this. What report are we giving? God is looking for those who've got a different spirit, humility. In the midst of drama and commotion, he had seen God before. He had seen what he had done. Hmm. And he says, this is what the Lord can do. This is what the Lord has told me. This is how God said. And he reminded them. Are you one able to stand in the crowd? Do you hear God? I mean, you know, you can hear God as you're looking at the fuel. Uh, <laughs> normally, I can go to put fuel. Especially if I remember it's around 15th and I'll rush and put fuel because I know ERP is going to do something. It's either going to go up or it's going to go down. But other times, I fill the tank, and then fuel goes down. <laughs> and I fill the tank, and I'm like, did I you go? I should have waited until midnight. It doesn't matter. Then I say, it doesn't matter. They'll still go out. But God is looking for a people 
who are able to hear what the Lord says, like Caleb, with humility and stand on the Lord's side. People he can call his servants. People who can give a testimony concerning God, concerning his deeds, who they worshipped in the midst of drama. God has done it before. Fuel has gone up before. F uh, prices of flour have gone up before. We've had transitions of government before. But what are we saying now? Caleb was such a one with a different spirit. So I'd like you to tell God in this season of transition, we are transiting a new government. We are praying for the new government. We don't know what we are going to have. In this season of economic active up upheaval, the drama that comes with economic upheaval, I want to be of a different spirit. You know, if you watch BBC, if you watch Al Jazeera, you see what is happening in the UK. You see even them, they are, what is it, their pound? The pound has gone up and down, up and down. Excuse me. China, they're talking about certain things. Ukraine, Australia, floods, USA floods. I want to be of a different spirit. It's easy to be swayed around like that. God would count on Caleb, his servant, because he spoke from his heart. Joshua 14, 7. Caleb spoke from his heart. Pray for your heart, Psalms 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, because I need to give a report from my heart. And if my heart is not pure, what report am I going to give? It's very easy to be swayed by those reports around. Matthew 5, 5. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And as the Lord creates a pure heart in you, like Caleb, you're able to see God in the midst of the drama. Often, people with ambition like Caleb, the ambition that Caleb had to inherit a mountain, usually don't have a servant heart. Yet Caleb was able to balance ambition and humility. We balance ambition and humility. That is what is going to cause you to see God at work. Psalm 69, 32. The humble shall see and be glad. In the midst of the economic crisis, the humble shall see and be glad. Psalms 138, verse 6. Though the Lord is on high, yet he, he regards the lowly. The lowly are humble. Psalms 147, verse 6. The Lord lifts up the humble and he casts the wicked down. James 4, 6, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You see why I'm telling you to pray for your heart? So that it might be pure, it might be humble, and you're able to, go, to, make, to make something. So you need to be nothing. Martin Luther King said, God made the world from nothing. As long as we are nothing, God can use us. I mean, if he made the world from nothing, why do you want to be something? He will not use that. Lesson number, I'm a teacher. <laughs> Three, patience. Caleb was patient and knowledgeable. Hebrews 6, Hebrews 6, 11 to 12. Hebrews 6, 11 to 12. Uh -huh. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. Is that NIV? We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Amen? We need to be patient. Caleb was given a promise at 45. <laughs> he was getting it at 85. Man, mom, there are certain promises you have been promised, and I'm sure you haven't seen them yet. And you're saying, last time when we talked about you getting retreads, 
to go out further. You did what you had to do, but there's still more. Mom is 85. You are 20. You are 35. You are 45. You are 60. Wherever you are, God is saying, we do not want you to become lazy, but imitate those who faith and patient, who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. You cannot inherit what you've been promised if you're impatient. And you normally you see people trying to take their own way, doing it their own way. Hmm. You will not inherit. God created speed. That's why you see lightning and before you, it has finished, then you hear the thunder. He created speed, but he's not subject to speed. He works outside speed. He works outside time. And one of the biggest tests is the test of time. There are promises we have waited for for a long time. Hebrews 11, 39 to 40. Hebrews 11, 39 to 40. Uh, there are promises that we waited. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them Yet none of them received what has been promised. Mom, the others who went ahead of us, they haven't received yet. <laughs> I'm not talking to mom alone. I'm talking to you and another person and another person, especially those who are mourning at this time. They have lost their loved ones. And they're saying, we still haven't seen it. Caleb was a patient soldier from 45 years. Abraham got his promise 25 years, David at 20 years, Joseph at 22 years, Jesus just when he reached 30 before he could <coughs> finish. He had waited until he was 30 to begin his ministry. Tell your neighbor you need patience. Amen. The fourth one, walking in the prophetic word, Numbers 14:24. Numbers 14, 24, walking in the prophetic, the word that Caleb received at Kadesh Panea. But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I'll bring him into the land he went to, and his descendants will inherit. As mom was praying, she was praying for some descendants who were born again, we've prayed for them, for them they're born again, and they have moved out of the kingdom of God. There's a kingdom to inherit. There's a mountain to conquer. And Caleb was told, you and your descendants, can we pray before the promise? The promises are fulfilled. Those who are descendants, you and your descendants. And every time I'm praying, I'm saying, this kingdom is ours and our descendants. And I'm not leaving even a hoof there into the kingdom. Pray. Maybe that's why God is tarrying, because the descendants, some of them are not there, and even us, we keep on praying, because we are inheriting it, inheriting it with our descendants. Caleb kept the faith, even when those around him had died. Can you imagine, at 85, the last time, this is, this is the third time I'm standing here, the first, 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 first time I was told to speak, even before I had some of these descendants around, and the church looked so big. I think I was still in college. And, of course, somewhere along the way, maybe I've not kept the faith, and I've seen people dying. I've seen people, the ones, I was looking at that pillar, that little uh, uh, booth outside there, that booth outside there, and I was seeing the names of those who were the, the, the beginning, the ones, yeah, the founders, yeah, that's the word I was looking for, the founders of the church. Can you imagine Caleb there saying, so-and-so was with us, he's left us, but the Lord has said. So-and-so was with us, he's left us, but the Lord has said. And we kept on reminding each other with Caleb, with Joshua. You remember what the Lord told us? Yes, that land, we're getting it. You remember he told me, I'm going to be given. What promises? What are you telling your children? What are you telling your people when you meet with them? And you're reminding each other, this and this happened. 
It's good to walk in the prophetic word. What the Lord has been telling you, yes, even if we're going to bar, I've had two, three people are being buried. Even if they're being buried, the Lord's word is still this. Yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Let us walk in the prophetic. First Timothy 1.18. This charge I commit to you, Timothy. This charge I commit to you, Timothy. First Timothy 1.18. Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies, prophecies once made about you so that by recalling them, you might fight the battle well. Recall promises, prophecies and promises over your children. Yes, you're not coming with me to church today. You're here, but it has been prophesied over you. Me, where my feet shall step. Even my children. And that's why I keep on talking to him and I tell him, Labatai, this is what the Lord is saying. And he says, may I see your word, Gogo? May I see your Bible, Gogo? I want to see if my name is there. And I told him I'm going to buy him a Bible when he's going to Sunday school. And he sees, he begins imagining his word. Can you imagine your children, your grandchildren, imagining, iman, imagining or seeing their words, in their names in the Bible? So Paul encouraged Timothy to wage a warfare wage a warfare. Caleb waged this as all the people he knew died. Can you imagine? Caleb crossed over into the promised land with a new generation. I heard something about the ones who are working with the girls to have the right of passage. Because there's a new generation that is coming that doesn't know the word of God because they don't have the Bible, but they have their phones. They do not have... Uh, it, they're going to quickly look up, the, as they're looking up the Bible, then a message pops up. And they have to read the pop-up message before they continue with the Bible. That, I don't blame them. That is what they are living with. And by the time they, you know how we used to underline our Bibles, we put the prophecies, the Lord spoke to me, and you'd put a date. And nowadays when I look back at my Bible and I say, oh, this one was answered on this date. Ah, this is what the Lord said on this date. And see, ma'am, it has been done. I, there's something that is lost in the interaction you have with the Bible. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with using our phones when you come to church. But Caleb had to teach a new generation. There are certain things we have to teach this new generation. Tell him, yes, Labatai, your name is in the Bible because the Lord says, me and my, my descendants. Me, I am me. You, you are my descendant. It is there. And he promises this and is going to give that. So Caleb kept on redeeming the prophetic word over him. He kept on redeeming the prophetic word over his descendants. In times of difficulty, he wholly followed, wholeheartedly followed the Lord and was able to do what you're supposed to do. So Timothy says to correctly hear and diligently commit them. What are you people doing? Do you know what the Lord is saying about you in this season? By the way, this is the season of tabernacles. The feast, today is the last feast of tabernacles. When the Lord tabernacles with us in Israel. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I began and I continued because I was a bit. Thank you, choir. Thank you for praise and worship. You took us very well and we could feel the presence of the Lord. I also want to thank the leaders of the church. I don't take it for granted to be here. It's just not because... They were Jiro and you Jiro, but it's just a special grace. And I thank you all for allowing me to be there. That was part of the beginning, but I'm glad I've brought it in here. <laughs> so, what are people saying about you? What are people saying about your family? What are people saying about your church? AIC. Oh, sorry, sorry. ACK. ACK Emmanuel Church Kikuyu. I said that because my church is. AIC Cup Teach. And I thank very many of the uh, ladies. I still have the blanket that they gave me on our wedding. They came in the night that time I was in Eldoret. That's a short story. But what are people saying about AIC? I mean, ACK, Emmanuel Church. Okay, I might as well use AIC Cup Teach. AIC Cup Teach, because that's the one that's coming into my mouth. And they know that Wajiro Wajiro Adomagakuo. That's where Wajiro's, uh, the, the mother, you know what mom used to tell us? <laughs> Mom, as we're going out, she says, Digeda Udio. I do magi ugatia magiona muiritua Mrs. Mwangi. That time is not what you run in Ajiro. Muiritua Mrs. Mwangi. 
Kana utinye ka when you sorry when you cut cabbages you shred cabbages and they're big ones and she says ah uh ah -uh. what are people going to say when they come to Mrs Mwange's kitchen and they eat cabbage that is shredded like that and so in here is up teach they know where you came from in AC, in ACK Emmanuel Church they know where you came from they know what and what are they saying about you but above all what does the Lord say about you, about your household, about your children, about the place where he's put you to occupy, at the place of the job that he's given you? Satan is constantly waging war to destroy our homes, to destroy the name that you've been given. There's a word that you're claiming that is that has been stated over your life, over the nation, and over your family. Use God's word to fight back. Caleb said, by God's strength. The fifth one, building and maintaining strength. Caleb was just as strong as he was at 45. The prophetic word preserved him. And I know there are words that preserved, preserves mom and Caleb, the Caleb generation, those who are 60. And you say it is the glory of the Lord. When the Lord tabernacles on you, when the Lord comes down on you, and the glory comes, the prophetic word preserves you. So the fifth lesson I learned from Caleb, building and maintaining strength. <laughs> he was 45 when he was given the word. And he knew he was not going to fight the battle at the back. He had to fight the battle in front. You cannot go in front if you're shaky. You cannot go in front in case you say, how about, you know we are told in these days, the last just shall live by faith. If your faith is like this, you'll say, I'm not going to go to the mission that the Lord has given me. Uh -uh. By faith, you go. And you find, the one which was looking at E, something happens. You get blessed or you do something and it goes up. What faith will sustain us? You're taking your child to, ch to school by faith, not because you've got a, ba a bank account. Mom said she has, been, she has been going on daily. She has never slept in hospital. Not that she doesn't, she, she doesn't pass where people pass. Not that she doesn't take, not, 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 even, not even the juices and whatever she's taking, but the prophetic word in her, renewing her. And the same prayer that I learned from Caleb, I saw in mom, and I'm seeing even in others around us, we have to fight in front of the battle, not at the back. And his confidence was not dismissed. Though others died because he had confidence in the Lord, he thrived. He became strong. I mean, for the Lord to tell you, mom, at 85, you're still full of vigor. Do you think he's telling you so that you can begin? I celebrated my 85 birth, sorry, 80, 80 birthday. So now, the others can go ahead of, mm -mm -mm -mm. you're going in front. Considering the level of warfare that is ahead of us, submit yourself to the Lord from head to toe. Body, mind, spirit, submit yourself to the Lord. Joshua 14, 10, 11, Joshua 15, 13 to 15. And may the Lord renew our strength in this season as you read that later. The sixth one, I want to finish. The sixth one, cultivating and maintaining friendships. Joshua and Caleb had to encourage each other. Do you have a brother? Do you have a sister? Do you have a daughter? Do you have a grandson whom you've cultivated for relationship? He never showed any jealousy to Moses. As others are prospering, there was one pastor who uh, ministered to us. As others are prospering, be happy for them because that prosperity is also coming to you. Be happy for those who are coming up, going up, because it is also, you're also going to follow them up. Caleb never showed any jealousy to Moses, never showed any jealousy to, to Joshua. He also did not assume he did not assume that the Lord said. Do not assume when I got saved two, three, four, five years ago, some of us when we got saved a little bit further and as we are renewing our relationship with the Lord, never assume. Ask the Lord. Remind him. This is what you said. Don't just, he said, and I claim it. Mm -mm -mm. Ask the Lord to bring it forth. 
even into your life. <coughs> Seven, commitment and loyalty. Caleb was a man of commitment to God. He never wavered in his commitment to God. God talked about Caleb and he said he was a loyal and faithful servant. Even David was a friend of God and he was also loyal and faithful to God. Much as he was tested in the wilderness, he remained committed. Some of those things that you're seeing coming around are test things. How committed are you to the word of God? How committed are you when you are praying for this nation that we do not go into uh, uh, violence, we do not go into ethnic division? How committed are you then to, co to continue praying for the nation that the Lord delivered because he has something he wants to do? Conviction was another lesson I learned from Caleb. Caleb was a person of conviction. As a leader, and once you've had the word of the Lord, and once the Lord has spoken over you prophetically, you are a leader. Wherever you are, whether in Sunday school, whether in nursery school, whether in secondary school, you are a leader. And leaders exist to create a different reality. Where the Lord has blessed you, where the Lord has placed you, that conviction to be of a different spirit. And God allows us to be people of convictions based on the word. And you cannot, you cannot not be a person of conviction if you, do, if you have the word of God. If you don't have the word of God, it's easy not to be convicted. There are many times mom will speak and say, yes, this has happened. But the word of the Lord says this. And that is what we are holding on to. And it takes us through. And so we give the minority report. People are going to be in drama. But because you've got a different spirit, you give a minority report. Second, last one before I finish. Courage. Numbers 1330, I'm not going to read that. We've read it before. Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. Take possession for we are well able to overcome it. There are times that we'll need people of courage to speak out. There are times that we need people of courage where the Lord has blessed you or has placed you to say something that is different. Without courage, you will not occupy. You remember those Amalekites we talked about. We remember the people that you were saying, the Hittites, they were great giants. Even now in Kenya, even now in your family, even now where the Lord has put you, there are the Anakims or Analekites, Anakims. And Caleb's courage helped him to become, to, became, to become more focused. God is looking for people who are focused because they have got courage. Joshua 14, 12. You are willing, you cooperate with God, and his glory will manifest. Tenth, audacity to ask for big things. Hmm. Audacity to ask for big things. Many times we pray and we thank God for the food that you've given us and what you're going to give us to eat. God is waiting and seeing. When are they going to ask for big things? Remember Psalms 2 verse 8. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possessions. Nations, inheritance, and the ends of the earth. What nation have you asked for? There's one time I was praying, and I was praying, uh, we had gone to a mission in Trukana, and I saw a little boy dancing and singing and dancing and singing up there, and I couldn't understand Trukana. And, but it was so beautiful, and I said, God, when we get to heaven, by your grace, I want to see that little boy and understand what he was singing and dancing. Over and above asking God for your daily bread, have the audacity to ask God for big, and especially in this season, ask. We prayed, we said, God, we don't want to see bloodshed. People are saying, okay, let us pray. Ah, 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 ah. What have you asked the Lord? You'll be able to say, thank you. So God will grant your desires if you delight yourself in him. Finally, inspiring the next generation of leaders.
Joshua 15, 16, and 19 talks about somebody who was there. Now, I'm not going to read that, but we need to inspire the next generation. Read Joshua 15, 16 to 19, and you're going to go back to Judges 3, 7 to 11. There's a gentleman there called Onithel, the son of the brother of Caleb. And he was a leader in Israel. When Caleb was going to possess his mountain, he gave his daughter to the man. He said he was going to give his daughter to the man who would conquer that. I'm giving you a story, but it is in Joshua 15, 16 to 19. Then in Judges 3, 7 to 11, God was looking for a leader. God was looking for a leader to judge the children of, of, of Israel. And Ohivnel, the son, the man who married his daughter, is the one who judged Israel. I want to leave that for you to read. I'm a teacher, I give people homework. Read that story and may the Lord bless you even as you remember the lessons of Caleb. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it always comes differently and in an express way. We receive this word, Lord, and we ask that this word is going to bear fruit in our lives. Thank you that even today, in this season, you're seeking to manifest your glory. Father, I pray for myself. I pray for every person who, have, who has heard this word, that there's going to be a people with a different spirit, like the spirit of Caleb, a people who will be able to speak from their heart, a people who will be able to speak even evil in the minority, a people who are even able to speak in the midst of drama, speaking the counsel of the Lord. Help us, Lord, to cultivate intimacy with you. Lord, help us to walk in the prophetic word that you have given us, that it might renew our strength even when we grow weak in the midst of things like look like they might be difficult. But Lord, let us walk in the prophetic. Renew our strength, renew our commitment and convictions that with courage will have the audacity to dream big, to ask big, and Lord, the audacity to dream, to pray big prayers. And Father, we pray, Lord, that we might challenge the next generation. Just like we've been challenged, may we challenge the next generation, that this word from you will not die in our hearts. Help us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.